Hello, Clint McDonald back with another Visual Basic tutorial series. In this tutorial we're going to continue once again the drag and drop database binding and we're going to investigate a little bit more with individual controls and how to set up group boxes of controls to represent database records uh, such that you can start editing information without having to use a data grid view. So in this particular tutorial, we're going to look at data sources window and automa automated binding. And there's some things you can do in order to make this a lot easier. And just a little preparation goes a long way. And then we'll look at how to easily create those controls and bind them to the database in one step. And then we'll talk about a few things that you can do in the future um, to look at things, for example, writing to the database, not just reading. And so let's get right into it right away. And so within our form, we're going to continue where we left off, where last time we created a combo box, which then populated a data grid view based on the category. So if we run this quickly to see where we left off, you can see here that we have our list of uh, categories. And as we choose a category, we go ahead and display the products that are within that category. And we used our um, creation of a new method using a parameter within our uh, data set um, and specifically within the data adapter itself. So where we're going to continue now is we want to see specific details about the products. And this is in preparation of potentially editing that information. So when I click on a product, product in the data grid, I want a detail window to show me some very specific things within that uh, that again will be set up for future editing. So one of the things I want to show you quickly is that within Visual Studio we have the ability to use a data sources window. So if we go to view and other windows right near the top here is data sources and when we see that it automatically finds all our data sources within our project and allows them to be controlled completely from here. So what you can do at this point then is you can go to the table that you want, so we'll look at the products, and you can automatically set this up. Now I've already done this in advance, but I'll show you again how I did it. You can set this up so that you can actually choose what control type you want to use with the associated field in the database. So the product ID is my primary key, so it's going to be read only, you're never going to write to it. So using a label seems appropriate. The name, short description, and long description are going to be text boxes. The, the long description obviously a bigger text box. The category ID, I want to use referential integrity and I want to use good database practices for data normalization such that I want the category to be only selectable by a cobble box. We want to have an image file name. We want to have a price and the number on hand. Now the price and number on hand, we probably want to set those up as numeric fields. So we're going to use a numeric up down for those particular fields and on hand as well. The difference is uh, unit price will be a monetary value with two decimal places and on hand will be an integer. And then finally we can use a checkbox to represent the Boolean variable of is active. So that's the preparation that you need to go into. And in once you have this set up so the right controls are associated with the right field in the database, all the data binding can actually happen for you automatically. So on the form here, I created just a group box at the bottom and I added the title product details. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one of these fields and drag it into that group box. It doesn't have to be in a group box, but it's just good organization. And then we're going to grab these particular fields and one at a time drag them in. And if I line them up a little better here, long description, put that in. Long description is going to be a bigger field, so we probably want to make that a multi-line label. So we'll go ahead and figure out where we do that again. So we click on that, properties. We want to control multi-line true, and that way we can have this stretch down. Uh, category ID is going to be a combo box, which we'll add over here. 
that image file is another string field. We'll grab group again, throw them here. Unit price and numeric up down. You can see by the arrows there that that's working. On hand is here. And then is active is a Boolean variable. I'm going to throw that up in here. Let's try that again. There we go. So we've got our is active. And for this particular one, I'm not going to use the label. I'm just going to set the text of the box to be active so that it makes sense for the user. Now we want to set the properties up for these items right away. So for instance, long description, if there's a maximum number of characters, we want to set the max property for that particular control. So as you can see here, um, the text box has a maximum length. So we want to make sure that matches the maximum length in the database. And we can do that through the server explorer and opening the table definition. Things like the category ID, this is the drop down. So we have to set the data source for the drop down. Now it happens that we already have a category combo box on here. So we can actually use that same data source in this particular case. We're not writing to the database from the list of categories. We are from the selected value, but not from the list. So we can use the same one multiple times. And so we can set the short name. And again, we want to use primary key for the value member. And now that's already going to be pre-populated with categories and all we have to do is make sure that the selected value is bound to the selected value of the particular product we've just chosen. For the uh, unit price and on hand, we want to set these up. So unit price, we probably want to play with this a little bit. And we can set this up to be, uh, say, two decimal places. Um, do we want a thousand separator? Sure. Uh, and I believe, if I'm right, we can set this to monetary. Uh, I can't find it right now, but I believe there's a way you can set the style up so that it's uh, a monetary value. And so you can see that the money is very small, so we'll shrink this up to make it uh, small as well. And then the on hand is actually going to be an integer, so we want zero decimal places. We probably still want a thousand separators, so we'll put that in there. And we want to make sure that the minimum and maximum values are appropriate. Now, if you're a store, 100 particular costumes may not go over very well, so let's change that to 1,000, for instance. And then we can go ahead and do that. If you note, know I've done no coding and nothing else in there. So let's look at what actually happened by using the data sources and the drag and drop method here. What actually happened is if I go into one particular object here and look at the properties, if we go to the data binding section here, you can see that the text property is bound using the product binding source okay, and the name field within that. And you can see if I stretch this out, product binding source and the name field. And that's true of all these ones. So select the category, for instance. The data binding is set up through the category ID. Okay, You can bind the selected value, which is probably a better way to do this. So we should probably go ahead and do products category ID here and get rid of the text one here and then that way we're, we're binding the selected value to it and unit price for instance it's not text it is the value member that's done as well and then for the boolean one here we want to make sure that our check state is bound to that binding source Okay. And that works. Checked or check state, they'll both work approximately the same way. So we'll just go ahead and leave that as check state. So as you can see, we've written no code in our code behind file here. If I open that up, we've added no additional code. The only code I added over the last tutorial is I added a little try catch block around the um, fill by category ID so that when I close the project, it doesn't trigger that event and cause an error. So let's run this and see what happens. And so you can see the form comes up. All our controls are down here. We can go ahead and choose a product. And you see what happened right away? That these detailed controls automatically got filled in. And as I choose different items within the data grid view, you can see that the products in the uh, or the values of the controls down here change automatically so because we've used the same 
data adapter in the same data source for both the data grid and these individual controls, they are automatically linked. So if I select something here, it's also selected in the bottom area of the details area. The way to separate that would be to create an additional data adapter um, with its own select, uh, select statements, etc. And then you can do it. The method I did here where I've used the same data source for both is great for read-only applications. You may or may not run into some problems when you start writing data. And what some of the symptoms that you'll see, for instance, is as you're scrolling through different items, one of the columns, the data will all of a sudden start blanking out because your data um, doesn't get written properly. And so you actually are deleting data out of your database and things like that. So you have to be careful using the same data source repetitively, especially when you're writing to the database. But in this particular case, we're not writing, so uh, we're okay with just going ahead and uh, using the same data source. As I said, just create a new data source, use its own individual SQL statement, and then you can use it for writing as well. So that works out fairly well. And as you can see, that was very easy, and I wrote zero code. Um, we do lose a lot of flexibility here, so this is something we don't want to do very often. But for getting something done really quickly, uh, a fantastic method to get a detailed section together. Thank you very much.